Did you know that two out of every three guys are going to experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? No, Keeps, I had no idea. No idea at all. Oh. Oh, wait. Look, I wish Keeps had been around when I was younger because advancements in science have meant that there are now treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss and help you keep the hair that you have. It's too late for me. My hair is not coming back. But you don't have to be like me. You can stop your hair loss early thanks to Keeps. Keeps offers generic versions of the only two FDA-approved drugs for treating hair loss, so you might have tried them before but never at a price this low. That's right, if you were thinking, oh, Simon, this is medicine, it's gonna be expensive. You couldn't be more wrong. Keep starts at just $10 a month. How does it work? Well, for one thing, no need to visit a doctor's office, just schedule a quick online consult, and a little bit later, a discreet package will arrive at your door and you can use it in the privacy of your own home. So, if you're noticing that you're losing your hair, that's one problem that's not gonna fix itself. Do something about it for a limited time. Go to keeps.com forward slash brain food or click the link in the description below to receive 50% off your first order. And now today's video. Imagine for a moment the following scenario. Vladimir Putin, having finally attained his megalomaniacal final form, makes good on his threats and unleashes a full-on nuclear attack on Western Europe and North America. You being the sensible person you are, retreat into your custom-built bomb shelter packed with enough canned food, bottled water, and guns to supply a small nation, and you wait for everything to just blow over. Months later, you emerge and survey the smoking ruins of civilization. The cold breeze stirs the radioactive dust. It's eerily quiet. Not a single human voice can be heard, nor the song of a single bird. Nothing seems to have survived. Then suddenly, you hear something scuttling through the rubble towards you. In all likelihood, the creature you just imagined scurrying about in the post-apocalypse was a cockroach. Notoriously indestructible, cockroaches were here long before humans, and if pop culture is anything to go by, they'll be here for a long time after after we've nuked ourselves into oblivion. Or will they? Popular conceptions aside, can cockroaches actually survive the searing radiation of a nuclear blast? Will they, along with hostess Twinkies, actually inherit the Earth? Well, as with most things we cover on this channel, the answer is complicated, and it's probably not what you'd expect. At first glance, the notion that cockroaches could shrug off a nuclear apocalypse makes sense. The insects, which first appeared 300 million years ago during the Jurassic period, are born survivors. They can subsist on nearly any type of nutritional source, including paper, glue, soap, hair, and, in a pinch, each other. And they can go up to six weeks without a meal. They can survive being immersed in water for 45 minutes, they can live without a head for up to two weeks, and they multiply rapidly, the average female laying around 200 to 300 eggs per year. More disconcerting still, a 2019 study conducted by researchers at Purdue University discovered that urban cockroaches are rapidly becoming immune to most common types of insecticides, making them increasingly difficult to control and eradicate. As lead author Michael Scharf stated in an interview, we would see resistance increase four or sixfold in just one generation. We didn't have a clue that something like that could happen this fast. Thanks to these and other traits, cockroaches have become the poster child for survival and resilience, inspiring everything from the name of the punk metal group Papa Roach to the New Zealand government's logo for Y2K preparedness. Despite this, however, it is unclear just where the notion of cockroaches being immune to radiation originally came from. Most sources point to reports of cockroaches and other insects scuttling through the rubble following the 1945 atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. However, as Nobel laureate and global health professor Tillman Raff of the University of Melbourne points out, none of these reports would ever have been verified. Quote, I've certainly seen photographs of injured people in Hiroshima that have lots of flies around, and you do imagine some insects would have survived, but they still would have been affected even if they appear more resistant than humans. Strangely, despite how thoroughly the notion of cockroaches' indestructibility has pervaded popular culture, relatively few studies have empirically studied the resilience of cockroaches and other insects to ionizing radiation. The very first was conducted in 1919 by Dr. W. P. Davy, who exposed the common flower beetle Tribolium confusum to varying doses of x-rays. Astonishingly, Davy discovered that small doses, on the order of 60 rads, actually seem to make the beetles live longer. And for more on these units of radiation, and exactly how radiation affects living organisms, please check out our previous video, How Much Radiation Can the Human Body Take? Unsurprisingly, the scientific community was skeptical of these results until in 1957 when Dr. J. M. Cork repeated Davy's experiments and came to the exact same conclusion. This counterintuitive result led Cork to end his paper on his experiments with the warning, it is hoped that the results reported on a simple structure of this kind will not be construed as a license for X-ray practitioners to become less critical of recognition 
recognized safety factors in dealing with the human organism. As astonishing as these results were, however, a far more resilient insect has already been discovered, the humble fruit fly Drysophilia melanogaster. In 1927, geneticist Dr. Herman Muller became the first person to intentionally induce genetic mutations in a living organism by blasting fruit flies with massive doses of x-rays. This technique allowed Muller and others to unlock the secrets of genetic inheritance far more efficiently than had previously been possible. It was, as geneticist Frank Hansen and Florence Hayes wrote in 1928, one of the most notable events in the field of pure biology in this century. On one Sunday afternoon, 40 mutations were found prior to the use of the x-ray. If one mutation were found in 40 Sunday afternoons, the time would have been considered well spent. Research conducted by doctors Dennis and Martha Wharton in 1959 determined that it took nearly 64,000 rads to kill a fruit fly. Even more resilient are wood-boring insects like Anabium punctatum and their eggs, which take 69,000 rads to kill, and the parasitoid wasp Habrobrachan, which can survive a whopping 180,000 rads. But the all-time king of radiation resistance is the aptly named Dinococcus radiodurans, lovingly known by the scientists who study it as Conan the Bacterium. First discovered growing in canned meat that had been sterilized with radiation, this pinkish, slimy, foul-smelling organism has been found thriving in radioactive waste dumps where the radiation dose can reach a blistering 1.5 million rads and it can survive twice as much when it's frozen. By contrast, studies of the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and industrial radiation acts that most humans are done in by a relatively wimpy 600 to 1,000 rads. You can see our video that time US scientists injected plutonium into people without their knowledge for more on that. But one of our resilient friends, the cockroach. Surely this ultimate survivor must lead the pack in terms of radiation resistance. Well, actually, no. In fact, when it comes to tolerating radiation, cockroaches are surprisingly on the wimpier end of the scale. In a 1957 study, Wharton and Wharton found that it took only a thousand rads to severely interfere with a cockroach's fertility, while in 1963, doctors Mary Ross and Donald Cochran determined that a mere 6,400 rads was sufficient to kill 93% of immature German cockroaches, and that 20,000 rads was 100% lethal to all known domestic species. The myth of cockroach invulnerability was even debunked by the TV show Mythbusters in an episode which first aired on January 30, 2008. In this experiment, the hosts, Grant Imahara, Tori Balazzi, and Kyrie Byron, used a cobalt radiation source at Washington State's Pacific Northwest National Laboratory to expose groups of cockroaches, flower beetles, and fruit flies to 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000 rads of gamma radiation over the course of a month. After 30 days, half the roaches exposed to 1,000 rads, 10% exposed to 10,000 rads, and none exposed to 100,000 rads remained alive. 10,000 rads is about the equivalent dose delivered by the Hiroshima bomb, meaning that at least some cockroaches could indeed have survived the blast. This experiment thus confirmed what Ross and Cochrane had determined some 50 years before. Despite their legendary reputation, cockroaches are in fact only around 6 to 15 times more resistant to radiation than humans. This picture gets even bleaker when you consider that most of these studies only looked at primary effects of radiation on the cockroaches themselves. As Wharton and Wharton's 1957 study revealed, much lower radiation doses would render the majority of cockroaches infertile, resulting in the population dying off within a few generations. Furthermore, nuclear weapons produce not only intense radiation, but also temperatures in excess of 10 million degrees Celsius, meaning every living organism within a few kilometers of ground zero, no matter how radiation resistant, would instantly be vaporized. The only exceptions would be burrowing insects like ants and termites, which might even be protected from the radiation if their colonies are buried deeply enough. But even if some insects manage to survive the apocalypse with their reproductive capacity intact, their future would be less than bright. As Mark Alger, professor of biosciences at the University of Melbourne, explains, For a while, they'll be able to eat dead bodies and other decaying material. But if everything else has died, eventually there won't be any food. And they're not going to make much of a living. The reality is that very little, if anything, will survive a major nuclear catastrophe. So in the longer term, it doesn't matter really whether you're a cockroach or not. But while cockroaches occupy the lower end of the radiation tolerance scale, being able to withstand 15 times more radiation than a human is still nothing to sneeze at. But what is it that makes cockroaches and other insects so resistant to ionizing radiation? One long-held theory posits that since insects are smaller and have fewer chromosomes than many other organisms, there is simply less in their bodies for radiation to damage. Another theory points to insects' relatively low rates of cell division. Cells are most vulnerable to genetic damage when they're in the process of dividing, which is why rapidly dividing tissues such as those of the stomach, bone marrow, and gonads are the most sensitive to radiation exposure. Insects grow by continuously molting and regrowing their exoskeleton, with most experiencing relatively little active cell division 
between molting cycles. Cockroaches, for instance, typically molt once a week, the process taking around 48 hours. Thus, in any given week, three quarters of a cockroach population will have few or no actively dividing cells in their bodies, making them relatively resistant to radiation. However, more recent studies have cast doubt on these old assumptions. In 1983, Thomas Koval, a nuclear medicine researcher at Hahnemann Medical College in Philadelphia, conducted an experiment in which he exposed various immortalized cell lines to varying doses of x-rays. For this experiment, Koval used 12 cell lines from four orders of insects and arachnids, diptera or tree flies, lepidoptera or butterflies and moths, orthoptera or grasshoppers and crickets, and acarina or ticks and mites. These cell cultures were exposed to a radiation dose rate of 830 rads per second, and their growth curves measured with a hamster lung tissue culture being used as a comparative baseline. Koval found that the fly cells were three to nine times more resilient than the hamster cells and the butterfly cells 52 to 104 times more resilient, with the grasshopper and tick cells falling somewhere in between. This was in spite of the fact that all the cell lines were actively dividing and contained widely varying sizes and numbers of chromosomes. This indicates that some other factor is responsible for the insect's extraordinary radiation resistance, such as an ultra-efficient cellular mechanism for repairing damaged DNA. As understanding such a mechanism would be extraordinarily valuable to the prevention and treatment of cancer, in recent years the radio resistance of insects has become an area of intense scientific research. Thus, going back to our nightmare scenario, despite their reputation as indestructible, cockroaches are, in fact, unlikely to survive a nuclear apocalypse. Rather, the true inheritors of the Earth will be considerably more mundane species, such as fruit flies, plants, fungi, and bacteria. I, for one, welcome our new microbial overlords. <laughs>